to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice there is no greater joy in all the world than the joy of being a Christian. The joy of being able to look up to heaven and say, Our Father who art in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9. We welcome you today to our program. We're so glad that you've joined us. We're going to be thinking about today why Christianity is such a great joy and how wonderful it is to be a Christian. You know, sometimes though, when you see Christians, sadly, they don't look very joyful. And that's contrary to the way the Bible teaches. Christians ought to be a joyful people. We ought to be able to have the joy that passes and the peace that passes all understanding. You know, I heard one fellow say that too many times, way too many people in the church look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. They've just got a sour, a dog just got run over, my best friend died, expression, and you never see the joy of Christianity in their heart and in their life. Well, friend, if there were ever anybody who had a reason to be down, it'd be the Apostle Paul. He is in prison in Philippi for preaching the gospel. And yet, is Paul discouraged and down? No, Acts 16 verse 25 tells us that Paul and Silas were praying in prison and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Friend, the book of Philippians tells us how to have true joy in Christ. It's one of those great messages that really comes out of this book. Key verse is Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. And Paul would say to those Christians in Philippi, you are my joy and my crown. In fact, the word joy occurs some 16 times in this small four chapter book. Over and over and over again, you'll hear Paul talk about and express to these Christians the great joy and happiness of being a child of God. Now, the background to Paul's message to these Christians comes from his evangelistic journeys in the book of Acts. Paul received what we know as the Macedonian call. In Acts 15, Paul sees a vision of a man saying, Come over here and help us also. And so Paul goes to the area of Philippi, and there he finds certain people gathered by the river at a prayer meeting. And from that point, Paul begins to teach about Jesus. He runs into a woman by the name of Lydia and her and her household obey the gospel and they invite Paul to stay. She's from the region of Thyatira. You've got a, a young woman who is possessed by an unclean spirit. Paul casts that out and she acknowledges Paul, or the unclean spirit acknowledges Paul as being a servant of the Most High God, which hurts certain people's wealth in that city because they're making money off of this woman who's possessed. And so they eventually get put in jail. They run into the Philippian jailer. He obeys the gospel. A lot of good is going on there, but that's kind of the background and the backdrop in Acts 16 to what's going on with the letter to the Philippians. Now, how is it that a child of God, let's consider this, how can a Christian have true joy what is it that makes being a Christian so wonderful? Friend, we want to illustrate from the book of Philippians four unique qualities that make being a Christian so wonderful. Number one, Christianity is the greatest life and most joyful life ever because I can live with true purpose in this life. So many people in our world are going through life without any meaning, without any real purpose, just a lackadaisical, nonchalant, no purpose, no meaning. That's not what life is about. 
the Christian has a purpose in this life. I want you to notice Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21. Look at what the Scripture says here. Very simply, Paul says, For to me, here's his purpose, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now the context is this. Paul says, I'm in between, as it were, a rock and a hard place. For me to live longer and to stay here on this earth more will mean more fruit for my labor and I can be more help to you. To depart and be with Christ is far better. He said, I'm hard pressed between the two. And thus Paul would say, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. What makes Christianity a joy? I have a clear, concise purpose in this life and it's to live for Christ. Friend, this means that my whole life is all about pleasing God and about serving Him. It's no longer about me and what I may or may not want to do. It's about living for Christ. You see, Paul said, the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And He died for all that they who live for Him, they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for Him who died for them and rose again. Motivated by God's love, I die to self and live for God every day. That's why Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 31 following, I die daily. This is why Christians are faithful unto death and we'll receive the crown of life. Uh, if I'm going to really have the purpose in life that brings great joy, I've got to have 100% devotion to God. Remember the words of Jesus? A lawyer came to him, scribe of the law, one who had spent his entire life studying the Old Testament. What's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, the first and the greatest commandment is this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Friend, to really have true joy, you've got to have 100% devotion. Having one foot in the world and one foot in the church won't work. 75% won't work. 90% won't work. I've got to be a, more than anything else. I've got to be completely committed to serving God. Friend, this means that every moment of every day, I've got to realize my life should be spent glorifying God. That's why I'm here. That's my whole purpose in life. Isaiah 43 verse 7, God said, Everyone who's called by my name, listen to this now, whom I created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. God created me for his glory. This is why Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we're to do all to the glory of God. If I'm really going to have the right purpose in life, not only do I have to be devoted to God 100%, I've got to realize my purpose, my aim, my objective, and everything I say and do is to bring glory and honor to our God in this life. And friend, in so doing, I'm placing myself under the submission and the authority of Jesus Christ. He's got all authority. Whatever I do, I want to do it by the authority of Christ. And I realize if I'm doing that, I have great joy in following the perfect example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now friend, if I'm really going to follow Christ, and if Christ is going to be my purpose in this life, then I've got to obey Him as well. The Ecclesiastes writer put it this way in the long ago. As he looked for purpose, as he looked for meaning, as he looked for something to attach himself to in this life, he said this, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's life all about? Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Why? God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. If we could sum up the whole objective of man, what would it be? Fear God, keep His commandments. Live for Christ. For me to live as Christ and to die is gain. If Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him, I want to obey Him. Uh, Jesus said to the pious Jews, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? and do not do the things which I say. Luke 6, 46, and it was the Lord who said, it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. 
but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so have complete devotion to the Lord, 100%. Make sure that our purpose is to glorify God. Be obedient to God and live for Him each and every day. And then, friend, here's how you can rejoice. If my purpose is to live for Christ, then can't you say like Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain? Death is no longer that dark, daunting day that I hope never comes. De death is a day you can actually look forward to. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Revelation 14 verse 13. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. And so what's that first key ingredient to having the joy of Christianity? Realize Christ is the purpose of this life. Secondly, if I'm going to have true joy, here's what I need to do. I must realize Christ has to also be the pattern of my life. You know, when you take a pattern, that's something that you follow. And if you follow it correctly, you get the desired result. Um, whether it be a sewing pattern, whether it be some type of a welding pattern, whether it be a building design, some type of schematic, if you follow the details of that, that pattern, you're going to get the end result that you want. Friend, to have true joy, Christ must be the pattern of my life. Listen to Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If I'm going to have joy, I've got to have the mind and the pattern of Christ. Now, what makes that such a joyful mindset? Friend, you'll never find a more selfless and serving mind than that of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in Mark 10, verse 45, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. Christ was joyful because he was, His life was about serving others and sacrificing on behalf of others. Do you remember the words of Jesus that are recorded in Acts 20, verse number 35? It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Friend, you'll find no greater joy than a life of service and a life of giving to others. Christ is the pattern of that life. Now, as you think about Christ's life, you think about a life that not only is one of sacrifice and service, but, but think about all that Christ was willing to give up on man's behalf. Christ was willing to give up His equality with God. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 9, He considered not equality with God a thing to be grasped or held on to. God said, let us make man in our image. And Jesus, as God's plan goes into action, was willing to come into this earth. He tasted death for every man. Jesus gave up heaven itself. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor that we through His poverty might be made rich. And so Jesus gave up heaven. He, he became a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. He gave up his life. When you think about a, a life of sacrifice, self-service, following the pattern of Christ, think about what Jesus gave up. He was mocked. He was beaten. People spit on him. His hands and his feet were nailed to a cruel cross. He hung in agony until he breathed those last words, it is finished. And why did he do all that? God so loved the world, He gave. Jesus so loved me and you that He was willing to die on the cross for each one of us. Now friend, as we think about this mind and as we think about following the pattern of Christ that leads to true joy, that type of mindset is going to encourage us to also be sacrificial, to also be a, a giving type of individual. It'll help us to realize there are certain things I also need to be busy about in this life. I need to be busy trying to spread the gospel. Friend, you talk about bringing great joy to your life. Teaching somebody else the good news of Jesus will bring more lasting joy than you can ever begin to imagine. 
Luke 19, 10, the Bible says, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And the Son of Man said to me and you, Go, go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Uh, Jesus' life as a sacrifice is going to encourage us to try to live lives of holiness each and every day. 1 Peter 1, verse 15, the Bible says, Be holy as He who called you is holy. And so think about your life. Is Christ, if you want to have real joy, here are the first two things you've got to do. You've got to have Christ as the purpose of life. And you've got to have Christ as the pattern that you're following in this life. Now, a third item is necessary if I'm going to have real joy in this life. Christ has to be the prize of life. Look in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. The Bible says this in Philippians 3, beginning in verse number 12. Paul says, Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Listen now. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Christ and going to heaven have got to be the prize in life. You know, a lot of people don't have joy because they think they're not getting what they ought to get. I don't have the type of house I ought to have. I don't have the type of car I ought to have. I don't have as much money as somebody else has. I'm not as happy in these worldly endeavors and interests as other people. Wait a minute now. If I'm going to have real joy, I've got to reassess what the prize of life is. The world and this stuff and the things that are one day going to cease to exist, heaven and earth will pass away, Matthew 24, 35. If that's my prize, my friend, that's a very shallow and passing prize. I need a prize greater than this old earth. I need a prize so much bigger and better than just the here and now. And friend, Christ and heaven are that prize. If my hope is built on going to heaven and I'm seeking that every day, that prize is in sight and I can rejoice each and every day. You see, my friend, we need to make sure that that's really our goal. Listen to Paul in Colossians 3 verse 1. Paul says to Christians, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Do not set your mind on earthly things, but set our mind on heavenly things, the Apostle Paul will say in that context. And so when you think about life, make sure you've got the right prize. Don't put your prize on so many things that are, 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 are mundane, are, are going to corrupt and eventually pass away. Put your prize on Christ, on going to heaven. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Hebrews 4 verse 9 says, Jesus is currently at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Hebrews 1 verse 4. If I want to see God, if I want to see Christ, if I want to, I want to live in heaven, that's got to be my goal each and every day. And if that's my goal, I can find happiness knowing. I may never have the best things in this life. I may face persecution. I may have difficulty, I may have trials and tribulations, but if I'm faithful unto death, I can receive the crown of life. Here's your prize. Here will be, this will be the greatest proclamation and the greatest prize ever given. When Jesus says to His own on that final day, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Friend, I'll assure you, if you want a million dollars, it wouldn't even be a drop in the bucket compared to that prize. If that's your prize, 
you've got something to rejoice and be happy about each and every day. Now, let's mention that fourth attribute. I remember the first three. To be happy, I've got to have the right purpose in life. For me to live as Christ and to die as gain. To be happy, I've got to have the right pattern in life. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And to be happy, I've got to have the right prize in life. Press on toward the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And then the fourth quality that brings real happiness. Christ is the power in my life and yours. I want you to listen to the beautiful words. You probably know them if you've ever read the Bible. The beautiful words of Philippians 4 verse 13 give such strength and encouragement and hope to every child of God. Listen to these words. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now Paul did not end this statement with the first half of that sentence. Paul did not say, I can do all things and the period end there. No. Paul couldn't do it on his own. I can't do it on my own. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Friend, if I'll put my faith, if we'll put our faith and our trust in the Lord, there's nothing we can't accomplish. I love the example of Paul in Acts chapter 27, verse 25. Listen to the words that Paul gave to the men that he was on the ship with that looked like it was about to be broken up and destroyed in the ocean. Notice these words. Acts 27, verse 25, Paul said this, Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as He has told me. Paul said, you can take it to the bank. God's told me the way it'll be, and that's the way it'll be. How true it ought to be for every child of God. I need the faith to trust God and through that I can do all things. I love the words of Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, let your life be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Why? Here's why. The Lord has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? How wonderful of an encouragement it is when God says, I'm going to be right there with you. I'll never leave you. You'll never be alone. I'll never forsake you. You'll never be abandoned. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Friend, if I'm going to have this power in my life, and if you're going to have this power in your life, then we've got to learn to rejoice regardless of the physical circumstances. I know that's possible. I know I can have joy regardless of the circumstances because of the example of Jesus. Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Seeing then that we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Listen to this now. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross. You know, you don't think of the cross much as a joy, do you? But Jesus, for that joy set before Him, what joy? The joy of doing God's will, the joy of pleasing the Father, the joy of being reunited with God once again. He endured the cross. I've got to learn to rejoice in every situation. Do you remember James 1 verse 2? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Secondly, if I'm going to let this power of Christ rule in my life, not only do I have to learn to rejoice regardless of the situation, I've got to learn to not let worry rule my life, but let prayer overcome it. Listen to 1 Peter 5 verse 7. This is such a beautiful and encouraging passage. The Bible says, Cast all your cares upon Him. Why? He cares for you. Friend, God loves you and God loves me. And God says, let me help you with that. Cast all your care upon Him. God cares for you. Men ought always to pray and never lose heart. Luke chapter 18, verse number 1. Oh, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it overcomes much. And then we want to strive our best to put our heart and our mind on godly things. You see, your mind and your heart is where it all starts. Listen to Proverbs 23, verse 7. 
as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, if I'm going to be happy, that's a matter of the mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. My thinking determines my outlook in this life. If I can learn to think this way, that Christ is the purpose of life, Christ is the true pattern of life, Christ is the prize of life, and, and Christ gives me the power to overcome life. If I can learn to adjust my thinking to those four qualities that are clearly illustrated in the book of Philippians, friend, I can begin to have real joy. And when I do this, you know, I can say like Paul in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. Now, friend, here's what we ask you to think about today. Do you have that joy? Are you happy, spiritually speaking? Do you have the, the peace and the joy and the, the, the comfort that comes from being a child of God? Maybe you look into your life right now and you can say to yourself, I'm not happy. I don't have that peace. I don't have that joy. But maybe you want that joy. Friend, I will promise you more than anything in all the world, God wants you to have that joy also. How do I know that? The Bible says so. God wants all men, that includes you, God wants all men to be saved. God wants you to be happy and that happiness comes in obedience to the gospel and living every day for His Son. Well, maybe you're thinking to yourself, okay, I want that joy and I want to become a child of God. Next question then is, how do you become one? Well, Jesus clearly taught us how. You first have to believe in Jesus as God's Son. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Once you've believed in Christ, you must be willing to repent of sin. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish, Luke 13, 3. Having repented, would you make that good confession? I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the Christ, Acts 8, 36 and 37. And friend, would you do what Jesus said to be saved? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Mark 16, verse number 16. Our hope and our prayer today is that God's joy, Christ's joy, the joy of being a Christian can be yours today. If it's not and we can help you in any way, please let us know. Please contact us. We want to help you to have the joy of Christianity and live the best life possible. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.